What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna keep taking a look at some of the lesser known countries in the world. Again, to clarify, anyone who has a minimum interest in geography knows about these. But maybe you'll learn one or two things that you didn't know about these countries. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Africa. So let's get started and talk about some of the lesser known countries in this continent. First, Western Sahara, a disputed territory in the Maghreb region of North Africa, partially controlled by the self-proclaimed Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic and partially Moroccan occupied. It's bordered by Morocco to the north, Algeria to the northeast, Mauritania to the east and south, and the Atlantic Ocean, covering a pretty huge amount of land, around 266,000 square kilometers. It's mostly desert, making it one of the most sparsely populated territories on Earth. It has a population of around half a million people, 40% of which live in La Yayun, the largest city. It was occupied by Spain until the late 20th century. In 1963, Morocco requested that it be on the UN list of non-self-governing territories. And in 1965, Spain was asked to decolonize the territory. So in 1975, they handed it over to a joint commission of Morocco and Mauritania. A war broke out between these two countries and the Sahrawi nationalists, which proclaimed the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Today, Mauritania has withdrawn any claim to the territory, but Morocco remains the de facto ruler, with the UN still claiming that the Sahrawis have the right to self-determination. On the other end of Africa, we have Djibouti. Djibouti is a country located on the Horn of Africa. It's bordered by Eritrea in the north, Ethiopia in the west and south, and Somalia in the southeast, as well as the Red Sea. It was part of a lot of ancient kingdoms and sultanates, like the Kingdom of Aksum or the Sultanate of Somali or Afar. It then became a French colony and in 1977 got its independence in a vote. Their country is named after their capital city, also named Djibouti. They joined the UN in the same year as their independence. There was a civil war between 91 and 94, which thankfully ended in a power-sharing agreement between the two fighting factions. It has about 940,000 people, 94% of which are Muslim. They are, however, a multi-ethnic nation with a lot of Somali, Arabic, and even French and European citizens. It's located in a very strategic region, controlling access to the Red Sea from the Indian Ocean and the other way around too. Right beside it we have Eritrea, also in the Horn of Africa. It's bordered by Sudan in the west, Ethiopia in the south and Djibouti in the southeast. The northeastern and eastern parts of the country have an extensive coastline along the Red Sea. Its capital is Asmara, and it has a multi-ethnic population as well, with nine groups making up its population of five million people. Their name, Eritrea, is based on the Greek name for the Red Sea, which was first adopted for Italian Eritrea in 1890. One of its predecessors was the Kingdom of Aksum as well, which covered most of the territory and also part of Ethiopia. This kingdom appeared during the first and second countries AD and they adopted Christianity in the 4th century. Today, most of the population is either Christian or Muslim. They were under Italian rule in the 20th century, but in 1942, closing in on the end of World War II, the Italian colonial army was defeated. They finally became a state, but they were federal state inside Ethiopia until 1990, when they finally got their independence. Today, it's a one-party state, and their human rights and media freedom ranking are amongst the very worst in the world. Back to the West, the Gambia. A weird name having the the as an official part of it. It's the country in West Africa that is entirely surrounded by Senegal, apart from its Atlantic coast. It's the smallest country on mainland Africa. Its name comes from the river that flows through their land, the Gambia River. Despite having only around 10,000 square kilometers, they have a population of almost 2 million people. Its roots are related to slave trade during colonial times. The Portuguese were the first to establish a colony on the coast, choosing that location precisely because of the river. In 1765, it became a part of the British Empire, renaming it to Senegambia. They finally got their independence in 1965. All the way in the south, we have two landlocked countries inside South Africa. 
First, Lesotho. It's an enclaved country inside South Africa, with only about 30,000 square kilometers. It has a population of over 2 million people, with their capital in Maseru. They were previously known as Basu Toland, but then they changed it to Lesotho, which roughly translates to land of the people who speak Sesotho, a native language which is still one of the 11 official languages of South Africa. They were first ruled by a king called Mo Shosho in 1822, being annexed by the British Empire in 1868. Finally, in 1966, they became independent from the United Kingdom. The other landlocked country inside South Africa is Swaziland. Their flag contains what seems to be a Zulu shield, very present in the region. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see a video about the Zulus in Africa, they have a pretty interesting history. It's bordered by Mozambique to the northeast and South Africa in every other direction. The country and its people take their names from Mswati II, the 19th century king under whose rule Swazi territory was expanded and unified. So the population of about 1.3 million people is primarily ethnic Swazis, whose language is also called Swazi. It was established as a kingdom in the mid-18th century but the present boundaries were only drawn up in 1881, in the middle of the scramble for Africa by European powers. In 1903, they became a British protectorate as well, after the Second Boer War, gaining their independence in 1968. They have a pretty strange power system. They are an absolute diarchy, ruled jointly by a king and a queen mother. The king is the administrative head of state and appoints the country's prime ministers and some of the members of parliament, while the queen is the official national head of state, serving as keeper of the national rituals. They do, however, have elections for the remaining seats in the parliament. Traveling north, Burundi. The Republic of Burundi is a landlocked country in the African Great Lakes region of East Africa. Bordered by Rwanda to the north, Tanzania to the east and south, and the Democratic Republic of Congo to the west, and also Lake Tanganyika to the southwest. Its capital is Bujumbura, and its 10 million people are made up of mainly three groups, the Twa, the Hutu, and the Tutsi. These people have lived in the region for over 500 years, and during 200 of those 500 years, they were independent until being colonized by Germany. After World War I, the Germans lost the territory to Belgium, who ruled it as Rwanda-Urundi. They became independent as a kingdom in 1962, but a lot of instability followed, a bunch of assassinations and coups took place, and it finally became a republic. Then they had ethnic cleansings and genocides, as well as two civil wars, causing it to be one of the world's poorest countries up to today. Even further north and a little to the west, we have Togo. Togo is in West Africa, bordered by Ghana, Benin, and Burkina Faso. Their capital, Lomé, is located in the southern part of the country, where its coast borders the Gulf of Guinea. 7.6 million people live in the 57,000 square kilometers that make up the territory, one of the smallest and densest countries in Africa. From the 11th to the 16th century, it was home of various tribes from all over the surrounding lands, but from the 1600s to the 18th century, with European colonialism, it became a major trading center for slavery, even being known as the Slave Coast. In 1884, Germany declared Togoland as a protectorate of their empire, losing the land to France after World War I. In 1960, they finally got their independence from the French. Something interesting about this country is that, unlike many others in the region, Muslims and Christians are a minority, and the largest religious group consists of those of indigenous beliefs. Right next to it, we have Benin, bordered obviously by Togo, which we just saw, Nigeria, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Most of the 10 million people live in the southern coastline. Their capital is Porto Novo, and the largest city, also the seat of government, is Cotonou. Their official language is French due to colonialism, even though their capital's name is Portuguese. This is because the capital used to be a city-state, originally developed as a port for the slave trade, an important part of many European empires at the time, including the Portuguese Empire. The biggest religious group is Roman Catholicism, 
followed by Islam, Protestantism, and indigenous beliefs. There was a kingdom from the 17th to the 19th century called Kingdom of Dahomey, which ruled most of the area, also being part of the mentioned slave coast. After slavery was abolished, France took over the region and renamed it French Dahomey. It became independent in 1960. There was also a very short-lived Marxist-Leninist state called the People's Republic of Benin, but it only lasted for about 25 years between 1975 and 1990 before being replaced by the current republican system. Finally, this last country is probably kind of well known, but I wanted to talk about it because it's an interesting story. Liberia a country on the West African coast. It's bordered by Sierra Leone to the west, Guinea to its north, and Ivory Coast to the east with the Atlantic Ocean in the south. With its capital of Monrovia, it has a population of almost 5 million people. English is the official language, but over 20 indigenous languages are spoken, with 95% of the population being a combination of various ethnic groups. Liberia started as the American Colonization Society, which believed black people would have better chances of freedom and prosperity in Africa other than America, a bit of a racist reality. Hence the similarity with the flag of the USA, its constitution is also modeled from the North American one. It declared independence from the US in 1847, but this was only recognized in 1862 during the American Civil War. Also during the Civil War, over 1,500 freed American slaves moved to Liberia. Liberia was the first African Republic to proclaim its independence on July 26 of 1947 and is also Africa's first and oldest modern republic. It retained independence during the scramble for Africa where European powers fought over the continent's territory. During World War II, it helped the US in the fight against Germany and it was also a founding member of the UN. So that was a brief overview of some of the maybe lesser known countries in the African continent. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave a comment with any suggestions or corrections that you may have and subscribe to catch all the new videos. I will see you next time.